Welcome back to a new one, and this occasion is the Ableton Saturator. Okay, so this one can be a very simple device or more complex. You have a color option and then you have a wave shaper. If I go to the arrow that you have right here, it will expand this and show you more options. But if you click on the color, all the knobs that you have right here are just not usable. And then if you choose the other thing that it's not the wave shaper, all of these options are just, you know, disabled. So if we don't use the color and the wave shaper, this device is just a four knob simple device. All right, so let's go through the basics first. I have a test tone, a pure tone at almost 300 Hertz. And I know that this is a, it's gonna be a little bit boring, but all of this just, you know, to learn how to control this plugging. And then in a minute, we will use it on some sounds. So drive will drive the input. So if you drive more, it will give you more and more distortion. So it will distort more. And if you go all the way up, you're gonna be, you know, distorting pretty much everything. So the styles are really important because this will define or let you see the nature of whatever it is that you're doing. So if I go to a different one, notice that the uh, drawing or the curve, let's say, or the display, it's a little bit different right here. And this is show you shows you what you uh, what you're doing when you drive the input. So if I go to the first one, the first one is going to be analog clip. So this one is a softer type of clipping. Notice that we have a tiny curve right here, and when we drive it, we can can see the same curve. This is why the display is important. It's letting you know what you're doing. If I go to soft sign, notice it's a little bit different. It's just, you know, harder. So it's a bit more aggressive than the analog clip. Then if I keep moving forward, I go to the medium curve. The curve right here is going to be harder. So again, as you drive it more, the clipping is going to be hard. So it's more aggressive, aggressive than the soft sign. If I go to hard curve, you know, it's a pretty hard curve. So you drive more, it's gonna, you know, do it more aggressively. So as you can see, maybe, uh, hopefully you can see the pattern right here. You go from soft all the way to hard. Now then you start getting into the sinoid fold, digital clip and the wave shaper. So these ones are just more digital, the last three. And they're not just analog classic uh, types of clipping like the first four. They are just more wave shapers than anything. With the sinoid fold, as soon as you close it, uh, as soon as you uh, drive it, sorry, it's gonna start to fold. And this is the main point of this one. Every time you reach the peak, instead of just clipping it, it's gonna start folding it, uh, it's gonna start folding the waveform on itself. If I keep going forward, it's gonna clip it, sorry, it's gonna fold it. And if we keep going, it's gonna fold and fold and keep folding and folding and folding. This is how this one works. And of course, this will give you a very specific type of uh, uh, distortion. Then you have the other one. You have the, the digital clip. And as you can see, this one is linear. It's completely different than the other ones. On the other ones, you do have a curve, but this one is super linear. And it will, you know, give you a different type of distortion. If I keep moving forward, then you have the wave shaper. The wave shaper is like a custom mode. And as soon as you choose this one, the controls at the bottom, they uh, go live, right? So they are enabled. So right here, it does nothing. And it's because you need to go to this section and edit this section so you can create your own custom wave folder. That's, you know, the main point of the wave shaper. If you want saturation, you need to go to the first four. You know, if you want a more traditional type of saturation, if you want to go to extremes, the sinoid fold and the wave shaper are, you know, for you. I'm gonna go to the analog clip. So since we can drive this control, you know, and we can go down if you want to, and maybe you're wondering why can we go down? Well, it depends on your input. If you're using this on some source that it's just pretty loud, this will start clipping because it's super loud. So you can lower the input before, uh, before you can start clipping. But then again, if you go up and keep going up at some point, it's gonna go really, really, really loud. So you have a second stage that says soft clip right here. If I turn it on, notice that it, the volume goes down right here. Notice if I go up, it's just super loud, but then it's gonna take it down a notch. So this one is a second clipping stage before the output. And it uses an instance of an analog clip, which is the same thing that we are uh, using right now. So think of this like, a, you know, using two saturators in series. First, you go to whatever is that you want to do. And then at the end, when you drive it, then at the end, the soft clipping is gonna use an instance of the analog clip and it's gonna clip whatever is that you're doing before going to do the output. 
And you need to remember this because maybe you want to do some something very specific right here, right? And then you use the soft clip and this one, it's clipping, right? So again, you are just using a second stage. So if you don't want to clip it, you know, uh, to have a second stage of clipping, you just, you know, disable it. And then you go down on the output and you control your levels manually. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and then you have this option, the DC. So this one, it will remove the DC offset. Now, if I just click it and do something and I just click it back again, we, we can see nothing. So this is going to uh, DC offset or remove the offset before driving it. I'm going to go to my tone generator, you know, whatever I'm using to generate this tone. And I'm going to be, you know, shaping all of this. I'm going to create kind of a weird waveform. I'm going to do it right now. I'm, I'm disabling the DC offset and going back to an analog clip. And I'm using this waveform and I'm just, you know, maybe not doing anything, even if I go down. So right here, notice that we have an offset right here. So when I go to DC, what this will do, it will listen to whatever we have right here and it will just uh, adjust right at the center. So I'm going to click it. So notice that it will change how this works. And this is what the DC offset it will do. Just will kind of make it more symmetric, let's say. Remember, this will do it before applying the distortion or the saturation. So let's keep moving forward. I want to show you what the color will do. I'm going to enable it and I'm going to go down on all of these controls. Everything is just down. The filters, it's, it's all going to be on default. And I'm going to be giving you, I'm going to be creating like a square with some noise. And I'm going to be lowering the frequency. So I'm going to be going around super lows, almost 50, maybe 100 ish. And I'm doing and I'm doing something like this so we can see it right here, but mostly we can see it on the spectrum because the color, how this works, it works like a tilt EQ and this three controls, they it works like a filter. Basically, we have two filters right here. If I go to base, what it will do, it will go if, it, if I go up, that is how the waveform changes. And if I keep going up, it will mess with the frequencies and notice how the harmonics, they change. So if I go up, this means that the distortion will focus mostly on the higher frequencies. If I go down, the uh, distortion is going to focus mostly on the lower frequencies. So let's say that you have some some drums, you have an 808 type of thing. So you have a you know pretty uh, wild bass, super bassy. Well, maybe going down is going to distort the kick way too much. So going up, it will apply the distortion mostly on the higher frequencies. So this will help you to maybe use the saturator on something that has a lot more low frequencies. The same thing goes for the other side. If you want to do more on the lows, then you go on the to the to the low side on the bass. Now I'm going to double click it to go back to the center. And then we have the frequency, the width and the depth. If I move the frequency, notice that nothing happens on the spectrum. Nothing happens. So this one works just like a like a cutoff, like a filter. You need to have some depth and width. So the depth is going to be how much of the filter or, or the cutoff we are going to be using. So if I go up, you can see that it starts changing. And now I can move the frequency and we can see right here how it's just m messing with this. Right. So this is how it works, just a filter. And then the width is going to be the width of the filter. And now, of course, right now we cannot hear anything because we, we are just seeing, watching how this affects uh, whatever it is that we are doing. Just going to be a little bit more easy, easier to hear when we do it on something. And we will in a minute. I'm going to go back to defaults and I'm going to disable the color. And I want to show you what the wave shaper does. I'm going to double click to go back to the original waveforms. And I guess I'm going to be using a sine wave. Like I said before, the, the controls right here will shape or create your own wave shaper. The drive is how much of the input signal will affect the wave shaper. If I'm doing something like that, and I'm going to go down on the output and I'm not doing anything, you know, we are just not really using the wave shaper. So you need to do some drive if you want to use the wave shaper. But still, you know, we are not doing much. You know, even if I go up, we are not doing much. We need to use the other options. Curve is going to add a third order harmonics. And if I go up, notice that it starts folding. And right here, you know, we get the really crazy shape. If I keep going up and up and up, it's going to give us more and more and more. That's, you know, the main point. And you can see all the harmonics that we are getting. So this one, it's pretty, pretty wild, right? So you need to use this with care, let's say. All right, so that's, this is what the curve will 
pretty much do. So, okay, so I'm gonna double kick it, and then you have the depth. If I go up on depth, what is it we get that like a sine wave right here? So this one, the depth, is a superimposed sine wave. If I go to drive 100% and, you know, depth 100%, or maybe you're going to go down this one, I'm going to go all the way up in the curve, so we get this one, but we can see that it's pretty much linear right here. Uh, if I go up on depth, we're going to see that it, start, it starts to curl. If I keep going up, notice that we can see the sine wave shape right there. So this is what it does, it's a superimposed sine wave. Now, it's going to be more obvious in a second, but, you know, we can see that this is going up and down like a sine wave. And this will, of course, will affect whatever harmonics that we get right here at the, at the, at the end. Then, then on the linen, when you double click it, by default, it's 50%. Just like the other shapes, you know, we have some like that, but, you know, maybe the linear, the uh, digital clip, we can see how this goes on a more kind of a linear, let's say. If I go to Wave Shaper, if I go all the way down, <laughs> now it's completely horizontal. So, of course, it, it, we get a very noisy type of sound. So, with this one, we can just, you know, move it and get a different wave. And now we can really see the depth, right? We can see the sine wave right here. So, the lint will affect that part. And, of course, it will affect the, uh, you know, the whole effect that we get at the end. So, then we have the damp and we have the period. Since we are going depth all the way up, notice that we don't get the sine wave anymore. If I go up on the uh, on the depth, the period works with the depth. So this is going to be like the frequency, let's say, or the density of the sine wave that we are using for the superimposed within the depth. So if I go up, keep going up, we get more density for that sine wave, and of course it will affect everything. If I go down, we can really see the sine wave, but as we keep going up, it's like going up on the rate of the sine wave, pretty much. And then the, the, the damp, and let me just do something like that. This one is like a gate. It will just affect or flatten the zero crossing point. And I need, and I want you to look at right here, the crossing point. If I go up on the damp, notice that it's flattening, flattening, uh, flattening everything. If I keep going up, it's gonna be more flat. So this one will sound like, you know, using a noise gate, pretty much. And just like this, using the controls, of course, you need to go wild and just experiment. You will be getting, you know, some wild type of distortion. That's the, that's the plan. There's all the harmonics that we are getting right here from a from a very simple sine wave. Remember, I'm just using a sine wave. If I turn this off, it's just a sine wave. So yeah, you can get really wild with this one. All right. So like I said before, this effect has a lot of faces. If you want some mild or normal type of saturation, go to the first one, the first ones. If you want something more wild, go to the sinoid or go to the wave shaper and just, you know, have fun. And I know all of this is just a little bit boring and it's a little bit geeky, right? But it's nice that now we know how to control it. And on top of that, if you go crazy, always, always, and this is, you know, something for all the plugins. Remember, you have the dry and the wet. So maybe this is just way too much, way too aggressive. Well, then you go to the dry and the wet and you go down and you still, you know, get your fundamental tone or fundamental, you know, waveform or input. And, you know, we do, you just do a tiny little bit. Okay, so enough of the test tone. Let's use it on some sounds. Right, so I have a tiny 808 right here. And let's start doing it. If I keep going up, I'm going to be distorting or saturating more remember to manage your output i'm going to be going down to maybe match whatever you said we had from before you can still you know use your soft clip if you want to and if i keep going up you get a lot more and you know we know how this works now since this one's this one has a lot of lows maybe we want to use the color just to you know to manage all of this because the kick it's just ruining it, ruining everything. So, I could go up, that doesn't work. I can go to the other side. And now, you know, we are getting mostly on the upper part and not so much at the lows. So this really helps. And you can, you know, modulate this and use a, get it as an effects. Then you get these controls. Maybe they're not so noticeable. On this, on the analog clip, I'm gonna go to the sinoid fold, and we get, of course, a completely different type of effect. I'm gonna keep it there. Remember, we need to do some depth. 
and now we can use it as a type of effects. Still, remember all this can be adjusted or we can use it with a tiny little bit of dry and the wet because this is just maybe not so usable but if I go down with the dry and the wet now we get something a little bit better and we can still you know modulate it I'm just giving you again different examples That was cool. Alright, so it all always depends on what you want to do. If you want to do just a tiny little bit, just do a tiny little bit. Don't go crazy on this one. Alright, so let's try it on a synth. If you want to do a tiny little bit, maybe go down on the output and then just drive it and see what happens. Maybe we can go too hard, just crush it, but then go down in the dry and the wet. You know what? I'm going to be going to the wave shaper, or we can even go to the sinoid, why not? If I go to the dry and the wet, this is too much. Go down, maybe adjust it. Or we can even, again, use this just to get something else out of the synthesizer. And use it as an effects. That's the point. What if we go to the wave shaper? If we don't do anything, of course, we will get nothing, so we need to do something. If I go all the way up, it's way too much. I want a little bit just to get that, you know, just that effects. Kind of like that, just to get something all something out something else from a simple synthesizer. All right, so that's fine. You know, it's a pretty simple device, but again, it depends on how you use it. If you want to do a, just a tiny little bit, use the first one. If you want to go, use it more as a sound effects, or just you know crush it on a different way, of course, use the other ones. Use the last three. Uh, options the last the three styles that you get here so that's just pretty much it um again just a great device if you want a tiny little bit you can get it if you want to go nuts and change the sound completely you can but of course you need to do some exploration with the controls right here at the bottom All right you need to do this uh, you need to do that all right, so, you know, that's it. If you liked all of this and you maybe learned something new, please like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to help the channel keep going on, you can. You have links at the bottom for PayPal, YouTube Thanks, and Patreon.